we are colour anodising and we are based in Manchester. We are responsible for anodising DMM products. Um, and one of the questions we're often asked is, what is anodising? Um, anodising successfully combines nature with science to create one of nature's best uh, metal finishes. Um, it's an electrochemical uh, process that thickens and toughens the naturally occurring uh, protective oxide. We choose it to give corrosion resistance to the aluminium components that make up our products, to allow people dis to distinguish their product from others, particularly useful when you're carrying bunches of nuts or camming devices. It will help the user maintain their product better and we believe it increases the lifespan of the product considerably. As well as the general corrosion resistance that would be achieved in say a product like this where there is a main aluminium body and a galvanised wire, the anodising is a great protector of multiple material products like camming devices. The anodic surface reduces the effect of galvanic action because it is actually dielectric which means that no current will pass around the surface or through the product providing the anodic film is intact. On a camming device you have several different materials in there, springs, axles, side plates, cams. There's a lot going on in one of these devices and I'm absolutely convinced that the anodic film on the cams, as well as being good for choosing, your, choosing the right component, it makes a massive difference to the maintenance and longevity of the product. So the first part of the process is the cleaning process. Uh, here we immerse the components in an alkaline cleaner and this removes any oils and greases that may be in the components when we receive them. Once we've cleaned them, we're ready then for rinsing. That's cleaner rinse, um, which is a recycled rinse water. Um, once cleaned and rinsed, we're then ready for brining, which is a solution here which is a phosphoric nitric acid solution. It's quite an aggressive solution and this polishes the aluminium, makes it shiny. As you can see, we have quite vigorous extraction. That takes any fumes that might occur during the process, takes them away, sends them through a scrubber, which we then have checked for NOx emissions. And that's done on a twice yearly basis by an independent company. An alternative to the brining solution is a caustic solution. Now the caustic solution we use when we want not a bright finish but um, an etched finish or a satin finish. Um, this is caustic and it eats away at the metal, it takes a little bit off the surface, cleans it up and provides a more satin finish. After the brightener and the rinse we then go through what we call a desmut tank. And this removes any other metals that may have migrated to the surface after the preparation of brining or etching. Another rinse and then we are ready for anodising. So this is one of the two anodising tanks on this plant. Um, and as you can see we have um, titanium jigs here um, on the rail. This rail, or this flybar as we call it, is linked to a rectifier. And we're typically running between 12 and 15 volts through the rail. The solution is agitated to even out the temperature, so the actual process does generate a lot of heat. The components can be in here anywhere from 15 minutes through to an hour, depending on the film thickness and the colour that's required. From the anodizer, we go through a three stage rinse. This is very important as we need to remove as much of the acid as possible. First stage here, the water rinsing. 
typically a pH of approximately 2. Second stage, cleaner water still. And third stage, typically a pH of 5 to 6, ensuring that we removed the majority of the sulfuric acid. And now we're ready for the dyeing process. So this is the dyeing process. Um, the majority of our dyes are organic dyes. Uh, again, we immerse the components on the jig into the solution. Generally speaking, the longer the time that they're in the solution, the deeper the colour that they will go. After dyeing, components then are to be rinsed, again thoroughly to remove any excess dye, and then we're ready for the final part of the process, which is sealing. Sealing closes the pores and stops any bleaching out of the dye uh, and seals the film. This carabiner is a fantastic example of the effects of corrosion um, on mountaineering equipment. This carabiner was retrieved from Gogarth a few years ago uh, and we think it was left hanging on the sea cliff for between 10 and 15 years. The back was originally not anodized, but the gate and the thimble were. And as you can see, exfoliation is taking place. But I'm sure you can imagine if all of this had been anodized, the carabiner would actually almost certainly have still have been fit for purpose, even though it had been um, left out in a dreadful situation for a very long time. We do not recommend you leave aluminium carab carabiners out in these conditions. It is not good for them. Um, but it just goes to show the the enhancing effect that anodizing has on the component. As you can see from this image, there are two carabiners. These were retrieved from Pigeon's Cave in uh, Pentruan. They've been there for about 20 years. One is fully anodized and the other is not anodized. It's clear that the anodized carabiner has fared much, much better than the unanodized, which is showing very big signs of exfoliation. I do believe that this is a clear uh, demonstration of how much protection anodizing does give uh, on equipment. So here we are in our water treatment plant. Over 50% of our water is recycled through an iron exchange system. This is the main control unit for the plant. Um, at the moment we have 6,300 litres in there. Um, then the first part of the process is to increase the pH. It's quite low at this stage, 2.7. The second part of the process we increase it further to a minimum level of 6. From here we add an inline flocculant agent and this actually grabs onto the solids in the water and makes, the, makes them heavier so that we can then pump the water into a, a settlement tank whereby the, the solids drop to the bottom and the water cascades over into a V-notch tank which is then relatively clean and is able then to go through to sewerage. The solids are pumped from the bottom of the settlement tank into a sludge tank and then through to a filter press. Here then the solids are built up and eventually form a cake and then the cake is dropped into a skip and tucked to landfill. The Water Authority randomly check water that goes to effluent. A good reason for anodizing these components and reducing the conductivity in the part. Uh, this will greatly help the longevity of the product and reduce the overall uh, corrosive activity that is going on in the assembly. It is still vital to maintain the product, especially after sea cliff climbing. Wash, dry thoroughly and lubricate.